in this study, they compared the work disability, the days of sickness, uh, friction, and uh, human capital and costs per day, and capital cost, news in Netherlands, France, and Belgium. And they found that Belgium was more affected than other countries. The quality of life of this population was increasing from the rights has been markedly affected. Regarding the physical function, activity of daily living, mobility, physical activity, symptoms, pain, sleep disturbance, stiffness, social well being, or uh, uh, unemployment problems, emotional well being, and cognitive function also was affected. So what are the characteristic parameters used for early diagnosis? We look to the symptoms, usually the patient comes with back pain for more than three months. This back pain always improved by movement and the, the pain increased by rest. And you can see here there is from the knee swelling and how it appears in the lattice and the eye could be affected. When, when we go for imaging, X-ray is very important, but MRI is more diagnostic because it can help early changes in the results. When we come to lab, lab investigations, we have to check for the disease activity, so we do ESR and C-reactive protein. Also, it's important to make the HNAB27. This patient, they have good response to non steroidal and as we mentioned before, there is family history. So what is characteristic about back pain? Usually the patient is young, less than 40 years, between 15 and 40 years. The duration is more than three months. It is associated with morning stiffness. And this pain improved by exercises and increased by rest. So modified New York criteria for diagnosis by including spondylitis, limited lumbar motion, low back pain for more than three months, as we, and as we mentioned, improved but with exercise, and not, not relieved by rest. The reduced chest expansion, and bilateral sacroiliitis, grade two to four, or unilateral sacroiliitis, grade three to four. Different ankylosing spondylitis, if number four or five, plus one, two, or three. And here you can see the epithelial fibrosis in ankylosing spondylitis. You can see also calcaneal spur and Achilles tendinitis. <coughs> and if you look to the slide on the left, on the right side, there is calcification of the long ligaments of the spine, mainly the anterior ligament, and squaring of the vertebrae. And together, this will lead to bamboo spine. And here, you can look to the bridging, which is extension of the osteophyte from the lower part of the upper vertebrae with the extension of the osteophyte of the uh, upper part of the lower vertebrae. In early stage of the condition, there is sacroiliitis. In the late, in very late, there is advanced sacroiliitis and fusion of the joints. And as you, as you can see here, there is also fusion of S1. X-ray evidence of sacroiliitis is a prerequisite for diagnosis. But MRI, is more diagnostic. So we always advise patients and closing spondylites, we do regular x-ray, but we have to go for MRI because as we mentioned, MRI can pick up early changes, early changes in the joints. And you can see here also the eyes are affected. Patient comes with scleritis, contractivitis, or iritis. But in the repeated and recurrent iritis, this will lead to cyanicae, uh, uh, which is adhesion between the lens and the iris. There is also a flat lumbar spine, loss of lumbar doses, as you can see here. And this will lead also anterior forward of the neck. So what is the EULAR recommendation for the management of ankylosing spondylitis? Your plan is the is therapy against somatism, sufficient education, exercise, physical therapy, rehabilitation, and non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and analgesic. And if the FDL Part of the spine is involved, which is the spine and sacroiliac joints. We go for sulfasalazine and other uh, tumor, uh, other uh, tumor, this is modified and traumatic drugs. But if the peripheral part is affected, 
create a place to go for human and process factor platforms. So the objectives of the disease, disease management to reduce, reduce inflammation and prevent and close of the joints. M4, low disease activity, pain is less, morning stiffness is less, and we do CRF to protein and DSR then to, check, to check for the disease activity. Good function, low disability, no structural damage. So what about the treatment? If there is involvement of the axial spine, the, we look at the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or selective uh, COX-2 inhibitor. And then we go for the tumor necrosis factor alpha antagonist. And if there is involvement of the peripheral joint, the same regimen, but we here we look for the hemod, which is a sulfa salazine, which is salazobirin, sulfa salazine plus carbonyl acid, nephronamide, which is araba, and this is to exceed to 25 milligram per week. And TNF agents available are intercept, which is embryo, dose 50 milligram per week. Adenomab, which is humira, 40 milligram, once every two weeks, and infliximab. What are the contraindications of this anti-TNF therapy? Current or recurrent infection, tuberculosis, multiple sclerosis, locus pregnancy. And the protocol of starting this medication we usually ask the patient to go for a skin test, check for tuberculosis, and do also X-ray. And if it is doubt, we do a CT scan. And this is the protocol just before starting the biologic treatment. So to conclude, ankylosing spondylitis is a chronic inflammatory rheumatic disease with a debilitating potential. It mainly affects the sacroiliac joint, the spine, and also can affect the peripheral joints. Main symptoms are inflammatory <coughs> pain, for more than three weeks, not getting better by rest and improved by exercise. One third of the patient with severe disease, one third of the patient or with both with <coughs> severe disease and uh, it will lead to a debilitating condition over all prevalence, 0.5% to 1%. Etiology is unknown, but there is a genetic background. There is a strong association with the histocompatibility engine B27. There is a late diagnosis five to seven years, and this patient, this disease can affect the quality of life of these patients, and also increase the risk of unemployment, and it has a direct <coughs> and indirect cost for the condition. So what is helpful for an early diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis? What is the advice? Screen your patient less than 45 years old, between the age of 15 and 45, who is coming to your clinic with pain, local pain for more than three months, not getting better by rest, and this pain improved by exercises. Ask for the inflammatory back pain, do ESR, do C-reactive protein, and check if there is disease activity. Ask for other signs of spondyloarthrosis, like anterior pratis or encystitis. Do the histocompatibility antigen B27, uh, uh, and add imaging, start by x-ray, and to hear more diagnosis, go for MRI. Otherwise, you will see your patient coming with a closed spine, loss of lumbar lordosis, and surgery is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emil. Very nice presentation. Perfect. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for any questions. I'm glad that you mentioned that any patients coming with lower pain, you should assume, especially at the young generation, starting from the age of 16, assume um, uh, that this patient has got ankylosing stimulites until it will arise. And simple questioning because the low back, the mechanical low back pain gets worse when the patient stands or sits for a long time and gets up while the inflammatory back pain improves when the patient is on the move. So long he's in the move, 
this patient, this spine is getting more flexible and it's getting the spin. And usually patients find it very difficult to discriminate, discriminate between inflammatory and mechanical back pain. So any questions? Mind you, the investigation doesn't help usually, apart from the HLP 27 days are usually not hard. And the HLP 27 is only possible in 90% of the cases. So meticulous history taking in this uh, uh, disease is very important because you can base the differential diagnosis on the history taking of the patient. Any questions? The problem is tired and sleep, but. Will, how important is chest expansion? You didn't mention that. Yeah, chest, uh, chest ex uh, expansion, we usually measure it at the four center postal space. And if it is restricted more than less than, uh, more than 2.5 centimeter, it's a fail. The point is, with the advancement of the of the disease, the postal vertebral junction is affected. So as you know, the chest movement is like a bucket hand in hand. You take a deep breath, Chest expand, your legs it goes down. So the movement is coming from here, it's a costal vertebral junction. So even in closing the spondylitis, it is restricted. That's why, this is a very good question, thank you. That's why we advise the patient part of the treatment not only to go for exercises and hydrotherapy, but also to do chest exercises, breathing exercises, expansion exercises that also help this matter. You know, there are many things which we have to be aware of. For example, Achilles tendonitis usually is missing. And it is, you find the question in the patient on examination, eye changes and mouse ulcers, because this is the group of COMX offices where there is, you know, best setting. There is psoriasis, and there is ankylosis, spondylitis, Crohn's disease, Whippets, Pair, uh, celiac disease, and so on. So, it's a, a broad thing. We history taking is extremely important. You mentioned about Achilles tendonitis. In fact, the entire group of endocytes yes. everywhere, shoulder pain, elbow pain, uh, heel pain, patellar tendonitis, all, all of it encompasses all of it. Yes, and usually the patient misses it because they believe that it is something very tight and Sometimes the patients are extremely intelligent. The other thing, you specifically ask about the pain, if it is central pain or if it is over the sequelae joints. And when you press the sequelae joints, you find tendons is listed there. Because for patients, back pain is back pain. Anything below the dorsal spine down to the bottom is back pain, even if it's sequelae or not, but it is back pain. Can I ask you, Mil, can you get unilateral sacroalitis? Yeah. Usually, in ankylosing, usually the, the, the condition starts by unilateral sacroalitis. Then it goes to the second side, or start to both sides. But usually, a young man or a young lady comes with unilateral sacroalitis, not take it easy, and x-ray should, uh, should... Take it easy or don't take it easy? Don't. Don't take it easy by the doctor. And don't take it easy by the doctor. And uh, they need to really follow it up because uh, just the patient getting anti-traumatic and uh, painkiller and he's not getting any not getting any follow up. But follow up of this patient is of paramount importance. You have to go for his RC reactor for team X-ray followed by MRI and you see him again after six months because, as we mentioned, it's a back pain. It doesn't come. It, does, it doesn't come and say I have cirrhosis. He said I have a back pain. Or sometimes there is. There are two conditions which you can give unilateral sacroiliacs from TB, sacroiliac joints, and psoriatic arthritis usually starts unilateral. Thank you very much, Emil. I'm sure that you're exhausted, but you are doing a good job. At least you are still on your feet and moving around. So I, I don't